What's up everybody? In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to build a table view with a custom cell uh, programmatically, no storyboards. And today's video is actually the Patreon tutorial of the week. Uh, my Patreon community every week, they vote on a tutorial topic for me to cover and whatever wins that week, I go ahead and create it. So if you're interested in participating in that voting process, check out patreon.com slash Sean Allen. All right, let's get into the video. As always, let's take a quick run through of the starter project because uh, I took care of some things because I want to keep this focused on the table view. Uh, so I do have an extensions and utilities uh, with constants. These are just my image names. If you look in the supporting folder here, the XC assets, you'll see like uh, these are just the thumbnails I use for the table view. Uh, and we'll talk about more about this stuff when I use them. I'm not going to explain them now, but when I use them, I will explain them. So if I'm going through this quick, don't worry. Uh, I do have UI view extension to pin, uh, you know, some constraint stuff. Uh, my model here, here's the video object. And then uh, the scene delegate here, this is the initial setup for deleting the storyboard. And I did a whole video dedicated to this that really walks through the step-by-step. -step. So I'll skim through it here. You can check that out if you're a little confused uh, or you can just copy this code right here for, this just again, allows you to start the app without the storyboard, right? So you see, I don't have a main storyboard, it's deleted. But again, that video walks through that step-by-step. -step. We're trying to focus on the table view. And then here's just the view controller I have right now. Literally nothing, just the background uh, equals blue. And if we run this real quick, you can see what we're starting with. Just a, a blue view controller just to show that it's up and running and working. But we're going we're gonna to create this table view right now. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, let's just delete this view controller because we are not using this. Get out of here. This was just to, to get everything up and running here, to get the starter project going. So move the trash. That view controller is gone. So the first thing we're going to do is file new uh, file. We're going to create the view controller that has the list of the... Uh, the table view. So uh, Cocoa Touch class, hit next. The reason I pick Cocoa Touch class is because I can do this uh, UI view controller, and it kind of like fills in some uh, boilerplate stuff for me. Uh, I don't have to like type it all from scratch if I were to just do a Swift file. So we're going to name this video list VC. I like to shorten view controller to just VC because that makes the file names all super long. It's pretty redundant. That's just a personal preference thing though. So here's our video list uh, VC. Uh, and again, let's go ahead and delete this stuff, but I get my, my view to load everything up here. And then of course, the first thing, right? The name of the tutorial here, let's go ahead and create our table view. So var table view uh, equals, and we're gonna initialize a UI table view and like that. So there we go, you've created your table view, we're done. <laughs> if only it were that easy, right? Uh, so we're gonna have a main function here that does a lot of the work called uh, configure table view. And uh, we're gonna do a couple things here. Uh, first of all, when you're doing programmatic UI, uh, you know, when you have the storyboard, the views are automatically added, the sub views are automatically added to the views. I always mix that up. So um, right now we're gonna go ahead and do view.add sub view uh, table view that we created. So what this does is this actually, this table view that we created on line 13, like it's out in no man's land right now. Uh, until we actually add it to the view, and the view is like the main view of the view controller, uh, until we add the subview of a table view, it really doesn't exist in this view controller. I mean, it exists, but you get what I'm saying. So now we made it official. It is a part of this view. And like I said, there's a few things we need to handle here. Uh, so we need to definitely, uh, I'm going to write these in comments for now. Set uh, the delegates. Set row uh, height. Register cells. And uh, set constraints. So this is kind of like the to-do list. This is what this function is going to do, right? So let me, let's me let go ahead and uh, let's start with the delegates and I'll explain that after I do that. So I am, you could potentially do all these in this function, but I'm intentionally breaking it out, uh, maybe overdoing the abstraction, but I think that's gonna help it make more sense uh, to maybe the beginner or somebody that's trying to learn table views. If I break out each task and do its own function. Again, this may be a little overkill, but just doing that for you. So uh, let's go ahead and do uh, set the delegates, set, table view delegates and then here we do uh, table view dot delegate uh, equals self and I'm going to explain this line here in a second table view dot data source uh, equals self so uh, well let me let me actually do this next part and then I'll explain the delegates here so you can see it says cannot assign value of type video list VC to type your know, table view data source delegate and data source so basically what I'm doing is I'm kind of like signing up this view controller. So self is this view controller, the video list VC. So I'm signing up the video list VC to be the delegate and data source of this table view. Uh, but it's saying like, I, I can't do that. So I need to have this view controller conform to UI table view delegate and UI table view data source. Uh, sometimes you'll see people do that like right here, they'll type it, you know, here up top. 
uh, but I like to do this in extensions down low to keep my code compartmentalized and separated. I think it's uh, visually nicer and like helps you find things quicker. So write an extension for uh, video list VC. And that now here we're gonna to conform to UI table view, uh, you can see delegate and then UI table view uh, data source. You don't have to kind of break it out into extension. Again, just personal preference here. So uh, in this, you're gonna get me, I'm gonna get some more errors here. It says video list does not conform to uh, the protocol UI table view data source. Do you want to add the protocol stubs? Yes, I do. So this will do it for you. So there's two main functions you have to implement here. And by clicking that, it added that automatically. So you need number of rows and sections. So the two main things table views need to know is how many cells am I gonna show? And that's basically what this does. So number of rows in section, right? We're only doing a table view with one section, but the main question, hey, how many rows do I show? And then here you tell it. So you're gonna return an int, you see? This, this returns an integer, so a number. Uh, for right now, we're gonna return 10. That is going to change in the future, but we're just doing this right now to kind of silence the errors and get the table view up and running. So first thing, how many cells? The second thing, what cells am I showing, right? That makes sense. The table, you would probably need to know that. So uh, here we're going to just return a UI table view cell, uh, just the default one. Again, this is just for now, just to shut up the errors and to get, the, get it up, up and running. We're gonna do a custom cell in a little bit. So going back up to our configure table view, and also by the way, as I'm going through this and building this, uh, I am going to do a summary at the end. So if you feel a little lost, you're, you know, you didn't quite get something, once you're gonna see the process being made and then once you know it's all done and you've seen it, I'm going to summarize everything at the end and hopefully that pulls it all together for you. So what we've done, we've, we've set the delegates. So let's go ahead and call that function, set table view delegates, cool. I can delete this comment, that's step one. Set row height, uh, we don't, we're not gonna do another function for that, we're just gonna do that. So table view dot row height uh, equals do 100. And that's because uh, because I have a big image and a, and a title, I want my cells to be taller. Uh, you can put whatever number you, you want. And I am hard coding this more advanced table views where you have like dynamic stuff because you don't know, like maybe you're bringing back like user comments and you don't know if somebody wrote a paragraph or just one line. So you want the cells to be dynamic. That's a more advanced topic, but that is possible. Uh, now we want to register cells. We're gonna come back to this because I haven't created my custom cell yet, my video cell. So we're gonna come back to that. So set constraints we can do, and this is where the extension comes in that I have. So table view dot pin. Now this is the extension I made and I'm gonna go back and explain that uh, to super, uh, oh, I'm sorry, view. <laughs> so basically what this is doing is uh, it's pinning everything to the edge. If you're familiar with constraints at all, uh, you know, you have to pin the top, the sides and the bottom of the view. Well, what this extension does, and I'm gonna to go to it right now, um, it's basically an extension that works on any UI view and it has built-in constraints that just pins it to all the edges, right? So to see the top anchor is equal to the super view top anchor, leading is equal to the super view leading, trailing bottom, etc. cetera. So uh, this is a very common type of constraint that you wanna set where you're just pinning stuff to all the edges. So that's why having an extension is pretty useful for this kind of thing. Um, that way, uh, anytime you wanna to pin to just the edges, you can just go ahead and do uh, what I did here in the video list VC. I'm gonna move this up here. Um, the video list VC where it's just table view, dot pin to view, and in your view controller, it keeps it nice and clean. And, and I like that because one of the problems with programmatic UI, uh, at least one of the things I don't like about it, um, for the record, my projects are usually a mix of both storyboard and, and programmatic. I'm not a one way or the other kind of person. I, I like both. Um, but the, the downside to me of the programmatic UI is when you're creating all your constraints, right? So having, you have all this code all throughout like your, your view controller potentially. So I like abstracting that away. That way in my view controller, it's just nice and clean. Table view dot pin to view, done. All right, so now I can delete that comment. Again, we're gonna come back and register the cell in a second here, but now in view to load, I can just call configure table view. And this is how I like to have my view to load. I don't like, I don't like a lot of logic in my view to load. And the reason being is because I like to, like the view to load and the view will appear, that's like basically tells you what the view controller does. So I like my view to load to read just like a list of commands, like configure table view, fetch data, do this. Like, okay, so you know what's happening on the view controller. Uh, I've seen a lot of view to loads that are like 30 lines long and have a lot of logic. Don't do that. So now before we run it, let's go back to our scene delegate. Remember where we set up, see I have an error. Uh, remember where we set up the, uh, what, how to show it without the storyboard from the launch. Well, that was launching with our original view controller. Remember that we had that we deleted? Now we have this video list VC, so let's do that. And it's actually not presenting this video list VC. If you can see, I'm creating a navigation controller 
and the root view controller of the navigation controller is the video list VC, right? So I'm basically presenting the navigation controller. Inside that navigation controller, you have the video list VC, which is what you see. Um, just one little caveat there. So now if we run this, so you can see our empty table view, right? We gave it a number of rows. Now we need to tell it what cell to put in it, um, right? Because we just have the default UI table view cell, which has nothing in it. So we're going to create our custom cell right now, populate that with the videos, and we should be good. All right, so back in our video list VC, let's do file, new file. We're going to create a UI table view cell file for our custom cell. So again, Cocoa Touch class, so we can get some of the default stuff. Um, we're going to call this, well, let me go ahead and do UI table view cell, right? And then let's call this video cell. Hit next, create. So here I have my video cell right here. Uh, I can go ahead and delete this and <laughs> actually delete this. So getting the default stuff, um, you know, doesn't always help so much, but I didn't have to type this out at least. <laughs> but anyway, so there's an override method when you're doing this programmatically. So when you have storyboard, you don't have to do this override init method, but uh, programmatically you do. So I'm going to go ahead and type this out real quick. Okay, so I've written out my init method, uh, as you can see, then you call the super. So pretty much every time you want override an init, you I don't say every time, but uh, most likely you're going to want to call the super um, uh, init method. So, uh, but you see here, anytime you do a required initializer, uh, you must have the uh, other one. <laughs> Sorry, the required init uh, with coder with the fatal error, uh, coder has not been implemented. All right, so now that we have our init methods, we can start creating like the, the image and the title, right? So uh, normally table view cells, like the default ones do come with an image and a title, but I wanna customize this one. Uh, so that's why we're doing this. So uh, var video image view, and this is a UI image view. We're gonna initialize, whoops. Uh, I don't want to that. So that's setting the type right there. You can just Swift has type inference, which is a nice thing about it. So you can just do when you initialize it, you already know what type it is. Uh, UI, I can't type image view. It's right there at the top. Uh, UI image view, cool. And then var video title label equals UI label. So those are the two uh, components we're going to have here. I always like to line up my equal signs, personal preference thing, just me. Um, so that there, now I have that. So now we need to configure these, right? And also like set the constraints, T tell, tell the cell where to put the image, where to put the title. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. And again, I'm overly breaking things out uh, because I think that's easier to understand. So we're gonna have two different um, configure methods here. So, uh, well, first of all, again, just like with the table view, the very first thing you need to do, and I've forgotten this a lot when I've done programmatic UI, what will happen is you'll set everything up and it's not working and you will have forgot to add the view to the, to, I'm sorry, the sub view to the view. I always flip that. Uh, so here we're gonna do add uh, sub view video image view and then add sub view uh, video title label. So there we go. So now our, our, our views are added to the sub view. So now let's go ahead and configure them. So uh, func configure uh, image, image view. Sorry, typing. Sorry. Again, I'm typing around my mic. I know I say it every tutorial, but it's difficult. <laughs> uh, function uh, configure title label. And this is just kind of like the little things that you do, uh, as you'll see here. So for example, uh, I want to configure my image view by doing uh, video, I want to, I'm setting the corner radius here. So video image view dot layer dot corner radius uh, equals 10 is good. And then video uh, image view dot clips to bounds uh, equals true. So this is what allows it to actually show uh, the corner radius. And then in my title label, uh, I do want it to, um, so hold on, I'll, I'll explain after I type it, uh, video title label dot number of lines uh, equals zero. So what that does is say my title goes to two lines, it's gonna word wrap it automatically and look fine. And you'll see that in a couple cases here. And then uh, video title label dot uh, adjust font size to width equals true. So what this means is it'll shrink the font size if like it won't truncate it, right? If it's too big, the font size will shrink a little bit. So just small uh, label configurations to to get that working. So before I forget, let's, you know, call these actually. So uh, configure image view in my initializer method and then configure uh, title label. So again, when the when the cell gets initialized, we're adding the views and then we're configuring them how we like it. Now, the last thing we need to do here, well, second to last thing, uh, this is just the UI setup, is to set the constraints. And, and I do have like some code snippets because I don't think you want to watch me type out the constraint stuff, um, but I will explain it. So func set uh, image 
And then let me do my Command Shift L for my code snippets here. Uh, cell uh, image constraints. Let's go ahead and use that. Done. Um, we don't need this. Make that look better. So, and I'll, I'll go ahead and explain that real quick. Let me get the uh, the title ones into in there too. So funk. And then Command Shift L to pull up any saved code snippets you have. I have that. Bam. There we go. So uh, I'll walk through this real quick. Again, I just kind of saved you the time of me sitting there typing all that out. But uh, so the first thing you want to do is translate auto resizing mask into constraints equals false. Basically, if you want to use auto layout, you have to do that on, on pretty much everything. Um, so how I'm doing the video image view, right? I want it kind of off to the left, like you saw in the initial image. Uh, so, but I want it centered in the cell. So the center Y, like the Y axis, is equal to the center Y axis of the table view cell. Uh, and then the leading anchor, which is the left side, uh, I want it 12 away from the leading the left. So it, you're going to see a padding of 12 on the left side. So that's what that does. And then the height anchor is equal to 80. So I basically just hard coded the height because I know my cells are 100, right? If my cells were dynamic, I would have to do something a little different here. But again, that's more advanced. For this basic table view, I know my rows are going to be 100. So I want my images to be 80 to give a little bit of space in between. And then this is kind of a little tricky constraint where I'm doing like an aspect ratio constraint. So I know my titles are 16 by nine, right? Uh, that's the aspect ratio, kind of like the YouTube video thumbnail. Um, so what, how I'm setting the width is the width is going to be, now I could have hard coded this, but I wanted to show off this constraint. Um, but the width is going to be the video image view, the height basically times 16 by nine to give it that aspect ratio. So if you always wanna have the same aspect ratio, so you don't have to hard code the height and width, uh, this is a good way to do that. So that's the image constraints. Uh, and then the label constraints. So auto layout constraints are very repetitive once you understand them. So I'll kind of breeze through this. Uh, again, the auto masking and constraints, you're always gonna set that to false to use auto layout. Again, I'm centering the Y to the center of the cell. I want the label to be in the dead center of the cell, just like the image, uh, vertically. Leading anchor, now we're pinning the leading anchor to the video image view, right? So I have the image view on the left and the label on the right. So I'm pinning the label to the image. So you can see I'm pinning it to the image's trailing anchor. So that means the right side. Uh, and I'm giving it a constant of 20. So I want the, the spacing of 20. Um, and then you have to activate them. That's what all this is active equals true is. You have to make the constraints active. Um, and then I'm hard coding the height to 80 to just to be the same as the, uh, the image. And then the trailing anchor uh, is to the cell's trailing anchor, so the right side of the screen. And then when you're doing the trailing anchors, you have to do like negative numbers. It's, it, that always confuses me. But uh, so negative 12. So I want 12 padding, just like I have 12 padding on the left, 12 padding on the right. And that's setting up the UI of the cell. Let me call those so I don't uh, forget. Set image constraints, set title label constraints. Cool, and we're doing all that in our init method. But just like our view did load, like I said, I like to have that just be a list of commands. This is what we're doing, right? We're configuring and we're setting constraints. Now there's one final function here um, that we're gonna have to do because right now on the table view, right? It just has a de it has a uh, just a default table view cell. We need to tell we need to have this be a video cell now. So for that, we need some videos. So again, the two things a table view needs to know is how many cells am I creating and what cells am I putting in there, right? So before we just gave it a default number and a default cell. Now we're actually gonna populate that with our custom cell. So uh, again, I do have an extension for some dummy data. So let's go ahead and do Command Shift L, uh, the dummy data extension. And uh, here you see the comment says, uh, generating dummy data. Where this data gets created is likely to be different in a real app, and it's likely from a network call. Uh, you'll see that a lot. But uh, again, to keep this focused on the table view, I, I didn't think you wanted to watch me type out all this stuff, but I'll walk through it. So I have this function called fetch data. And again, you'll commonly see this in a real app as like a network call. Like it's fetching from the Twitter servers and all the, showing all the tweets. But this is just dummy data. So this is returning an array of videos. Remember the video object I had here? A video just has an image and a title. Uh, so that is uh, what this is returning, an array of those. So for example, video one, I'm initializing with an image. And normally when you initialize an image, you have to do UI image dot and then type out the name. But that's what this constants file was for, where I have my struct of images. So where everything is like, has already been coded in here, like I've already initialized the image, right? So that way I can just do images dot 90 to get this. And the reason you do that is so you don't have to type out these strings every time. Because when you're typing out strings, like you're, you're liable to have a typo. And in an image, if I were to have a typo, like if that were just 90.-9, like I, my image wouldn't show up, it would be an error. So you wanna do that to avoid typos here. And uh, so now I can just do images dot no storyboard. And the cool thing is you also get like the autocomplete too when you do this. So if I do images dot 
you know, you can see these are all the images I created here, so no storyboard. So that's a, a benefit of creating that constants file too. And then I did just type in the string uh, for the title of each video. And I created 10 videos, as you can see, returned an array of video 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that's what this is returning here. So that's the quick dummy data explanation. And one basic thing about a table view is a table view pretty much always takes in an array of something. So I want a var, let's call this videos. We're going to create an array of the videos here. So it is going to be of type and then the array video. And right now this is just an empty array because that's how you're going to do it normally. Because again, like I said, a lot of times you'll be fetching data from a server. So I have my, whoops, this should be videos because it's plural. Uh, so I have my videos, which is an array of videos. And you can see that's what I created down here with fetch data. So the first thing I want to do, or one of the first things I want to do here in uh, view to load here is to fetch the data. So let's say videos equals fetch data. Right, so what fetch data does, remember, it returns this list of video, this uh, array of videos. So basically, I've just populated this empty array of videos with all that stuff I created down there. So now I have an array of videos to pass into my table view, right? A, a table view is basically a list of stuff. Well, what is that stuff you're listing? That's what this array of videos is. So back down to the two main questions, right? How many cells do I show? What cells do I show? So now we know the how many right because it's we're going to do instead of returning 10 we're going to do videos dot count so videos dot count is just the number of videos in the array that's how many cells we're going to show right that makes sense so now the final question we need to answer is what cell do we show so back to this register cells here we have to register the cell uh, let's go ahead and do that and that's table view so we're registering it on the table view dot register and you know, you'll get the autocomplete here uh, we want cell class so the cell class is going to be video cell that's the custom cell that we created and you got to do a dot self there and then for uh, reuse identifier, so this is where you have to give it a string. If you've built a table view uh, on storyboard, you know, this is just a, a field that you fill out. You may be familiar with that. Um, so this is the same thing that we're doing here, just programmatically. So we're registering the cell with the reuse identifier of video cell. And this comes into play uh, down here when we're configuring our cell. So, okay, cell is registered. Uh, we're good to go there. One quick thing I forgot to do is give the uh, give this a title here. So this is just the title of the view controller uh, equals... Uh, and you pass in a string, Sean's videos. And that's just for the um, the navigation bar, the, the title up there. You, you'll see that when it pops up. Um, so now the last piece of the puzzle here is actually sending the custom cell to the table view. So instead of returning a UI table view cell, we're actually going to add some code in here. We're going to create this custom cell. So let cell uh, equal table view dot DQ and then reusable cell with identifier. This is the identifier. We're gonna talk about this DQ stuff, right, on how the actual table view works. This is part of the whole wrap up at the end where I kind of hopefully make all this make sense. And then again, the string is video cell. But remember I just talked about how like having these strings and typos is dangerous, right? Like if I would have had a typo there in video cell that didn't match up with this string perfectly, uh, it wouldn't work, everything would break. So what I like to do for my cells here is make a little struct at the top. So struct, and then this is cells <clears throat> and you static let video cell equal video cell. And the reason you do this is that way you only have to write this string once. So now instead of having this string here, I can do cells dot video cell and you get the autocomplete here. And then same thing here, cells dot video cell. So that way I don't have like stringly typed stuff everywhere. Um, so, okay, this warning will get fixed here. So now we have uh, our cell, except one thing I, I forgot to do here is you need to cast this uh, as a video cell. And the reason we're going to do that is because we want access, uh, we want to tell it it's a video cell because we want access to the functions on the video cell. And I'm missing one key function here that we're going to need. So this is like what makes the magic all happen. So I saved it for last. And again, I'm going to do a, a recap at the end here. So uh, I do a function called func set, and then it passes in a video, that video object. And then here is where we basically configure the cell. So like I said, uh, video image view dot image equals video dot image. So what's going on here is, and I'll explain this at the end too, but we're passing through a video and whatever video gets passed on the cell, like remember the video is the objects that we created uh, down here. Like each one has an image, each one has a title. So back in the video cell, uh, now that I've been passed in a video, I'm going to set that specific cells image view image to whatever image is attached to that video that I passed in. And then the same thing with the title. So video title label dot uh, text, went blank there, uh, equals video dot uh, title. 
right? So we're just passing the image in the title. And then back in the video list VC, uh, this is where we're actually gonna use it here, right? So we created our cell that is a video cell. Now we need to determine which video I'm gonna pass in. Um, and I'm gonna explain how cell for row works here in a second. Um, so now we need to create a video, let video uh, equal videos. So this is the array, and then this is the index of the array. And this is gonna be confusing if you haven't seen this, but I'm gonna explain it. Uh, index path dot row, and then uh, cell. So now this is why, you know, when creating a video cell, I want access to this function that I just created called set video. And then we're passing in the video we created on line 54. And then now for this cell, we don't want to return a default uh, table view cell anymore. We want to return the cell that we created here and configured on line 52 and 55. So, okay, let me explain this function because this is kind of, like I said, where, where the magic happens. So the way cell for row uh, at index path works is this gets called every time a new cell comes on the screen, right? You see this DQ reusable cell. So if you imagine a list of like 100 cells long, like it's not like your phone is moving up and down that, that list, right? It's your phone only generates enough cells that are on the screen. And what happens is just before a cell is about to come on the screen, it gets configured. So when you're swiping real fast up and down on Twitter, like those tweets are getting generated like super fast in the table view cell uh, before it comes on, right? It's not like the long list already exists and you're just kind of moving up it. Um, so that's what's going on here. So basically this function, as you're scrolling, gets called a lot. Uh, so that's also, you know, performance issues. You wanna make sure not a lot of heavy performance stuff is going on here. So that's what's going on. Every time we're creating this cell and we're picking what video it is. So video at index path dot row and the cell does have an index path. Think of the index path. Remember I have 10 here. So I'm gonna have 10 index paths. So, you know, if it's at index path, you know, seven, well, I think they're, they're zero indexed. So I guess this would be index path six um, that, you know, it's gonna get this video. So that's why uh, here, when I say what video in the array do I want? So index path dot row, is either gonna be you know, zero through nine right here because it's index path. So that's being passed in. So I know which video to grab out of the array. And then I know which video to grab out of the array. So I pass that into cell.set, which again, in my video cell here, uh, sets the image and the title appropriately for the right video. So that's the gist of how uh, self row and index path uh, works. Again, just one key thing, one key unlock for me when I was trying to understand this I like for some reason I used to think this only happened at the initial setup of the table view. But once I kind of realized that no, this gets called all the time. Like every time this this table view is moving up and down, this is getting called. Once I kind of realized that, this all started to make sense for me. So hopefully it makes sense for you too. But that wraps up the code. Let's go ahead and run this and, and see what we got. We should have a working nice little table view here. Bam, Sean's videos, remember that was the title I did. Here's the image, you see the corner radius we put on the image and you can see the aspect ratio is being kept. Here's the title, you can see all the constraints in action. And then as we're swiping up, so like I said, right now, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cells are on the screen. So that means like, you know, the, the phone only generates, well, it may generate one or two above for the little buffer, that's getting too technical. But anyway, so as I'm scrolling, you know, the cells are being generated like I talked about. So, all right, let's give the quick recap, the rundown of everything that's going on here in the table view cell, right? So uh, again, the first thing that happens is I am fetching the data because I am I wanna populate this array of videos, right? Because uh, a table view needs a list of stuff to show, right? Again, the table view is just a list of things. What are you showing? And that's where these videos come in. So you create an array uh, of videos. The table view is always gonna need an array. And then uh, we're configuring the table view, which again, you have to set the delegates. Many, many errors, like if it's not working, you will have forgot to set the delegate uh, and data source. Uh, so you have to do that. And again, self is uh, the video list VC. That's what you're setting. And then whenever you do that, you have to conform uh, to those delegates. Uh, so UI table view delegate and UI table view data source. Uh, again, those are these functions here. Now there are many more functions. These are just the two that are required. For example, if I type in here, uh, table view, you can see like did select row, did deselect row, did highlight, did end editing, did unhighlight, can edit. Like there's a lot, right? Um, but this is just the basic table view. So table views are real powerful. You can do a lot. Um, for example, like did select is what happens when the user taps the row. This is usually when you would like send them to a new screen, right? The master detail view. We're obviously not getting into that now, but I wanted to point out that there are many, many more uh, methods. But again, the two most important ones, the two required ones, how many cells are we gonna show? What are we gonna show in it, right? So we're gonna show the number of videos we have in our array, cool. And then here, we're gonna show, you know, we're gonna create the cell, the video cell that we created, the custom one. 
uh, we're going to tell it what video to put in that cell. Again, the index path is the, the number, right? So in this case, it would be, you know, zero through nine, can zero index on one through 10. And then we grab the right video and then we pass that video to our cell, which if we go to our cell, uh, it will set up the image and the text uh, appropriately. And then all the other stuff in the video cell, uh, again, is just the constraint stuff. And remember the thing I said about the programmatic UI is like, you just get a lot of like, it's not messy constraint code, but it's just, it's a lot of, of, of code doing that that way. So um, so where this file may not may look like a lot, uh, if this were in storyboard, it would be like pretty much just this. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I digress. And back to the video list, we see that, like I said, you're returning uh, the cell after you, you basically set the video. Uh, and that's that. So uh, hopefully you found that helpful, uh, building a table view programmatically. If you have any questions, please leave them uh, in the comments. Happy to answer them. Uh, I put out new tutorials all the time. So if you found this interesting, consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next one.